Hello, my name is Teddy Henderson and today I'm going to be reflecting on my learning journey throughout the Visualising Peace module this semester. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about military involvement in peace operations and guiding you through some of the key research which I've found in this area and trying to explore how different disciplines can aid in understanding on this subject. The Visualising Peace module has been an incredibly exciting learning journey for me. It's been quite a steep learning curve, having never studied peace or conflict studies at university before. My background is a, as a biology student, so a lot of the content covered in classes was new to me, but I've been very curious and willing to learn. Um, the reason that I wanted to take this module was due to um, a military background in my family, and I'm currently a member of the University Officer Training Corps in St Andrews, which is a part of the military reserves. So I'm exposed to a lot of the ideas surrounding military action. And something which I question is whether or not military action and intervention is a force for good or bad in the international community. And something which I really wanted to explore more. A couple of the most influential concepts in my perspective on peace building were discussions around top-down and bottom-up peace, um, with top-down peace being perpetuated by external actors, so leaders or institutions acting upon a community and trying to facilitate peace, versus bottom-up peace being led by the community and also known as grassroots peace. The next distinction which was important for me was between negative peace and positive peace. So negative peace being defined as the absence of direct violence and positive peace being an active type of peace which is worked for and also does not include structural violence or social injustice upon a person. And these are concepts developed by the Norwegian peace, research, peace researcher Johan Galtung. Um, and how military intervention relates to this is that military intervention does form a kind of top-down peace building as well as facilitating a negative peace. So it can help in creating an absence of violence or ending violent conflict, but it can help in creating bottom-up peace or creating social change to obtain positive peace. And this presentation is going to mainly focus on how military intervention occurs rather than whether it should occur or when and where it should occur which is something which has been explored in other library entries and learning journeys. So one of the important things about reflecting on the research which I've done has been how different disciplines can help in understanding the role of military in intervention and in peace operations. And of the articles which I've chosen to discuss, there's a range of disciplines covered, including military backgrounds, peace and conflict research backgrounds, political backgrounds, as well as using statistics and human science to create conclusions. The military role in reconciliation is a monograph by a, a member of the US Army and it discusses the definition of reconciliation and concludes it to be a complex social process. However, it brings to light the idea of reconciliation in the eyes of the US government and how there's some ambiguity around the term which has been put on the military, perhaps mistakenly. And this confusion has led to concepts of armed reconcilers which are members of the military intervening and forcing the reconciliation of two conflicting groups of people. And 
the author finds some issues in this, in that those who need to reconcile will only successfully do so if they want to. The author instead points to the limits of military intervention and perhaps removes the role of military in reconciliation process, but rather points to the military as having a role in facilitating the reconciliation process through stabilisation and reduction in violence in the area. This article is a review of a seminar which had members of both peace and conflict study research backgrounds and military backgrounds. And the securitization and monitoring of ceasefires was discussed as within the scope of the, of the military in peace building and peacekeeping operations. However, there was some suggestion of unarmed civilian forces being able to carry out similar roles and promoting the use of unarmed civilian forces as much as possible instead of military. The military perspective in the seminar also explained some of the expectations on soldiers nowadays in peacekeeping operations and how they're expected to shift roles and be able to play both a soldier and a warrior, as well as a diplomat and a negotiator. And this is something which soldiers are perhaps not trained to do. The training and quality of troops is found to be of great importance to the success of a peacekeeping mission in this article. The article uses statistics to quantify how well a troop is able to protect civilians, deter violence against civilians and monitor a ceasefire. And it finds that troops with better training, equipment, intelligence and diplomatic support are much more likely to have a positive outcome from their operation. Furthermore, high quality troops trump having a large size of the peacekeeping troop, as well as having a great diversity within the troop in reducing harm to civilians. This is a very interesting article to me as it takes a very different approach to understanding the role of the military in peace building. It uses something called hermeneutic phenomenology, which explores the narratives and lived experiences of the soldiers and how that shapes the choices which they make. So this article explores some of the stories which Canadian soldiers told about their time deployed on peacekeeping operations. And it concludes that there's an intrinsic third party role to individuals in in these peacekeeping operations and this extends the scope of the military role in peace building and while previous articles have focused on securitization and the monitoring of ceasefires and the protection of civilians this article suggests that the military pays a role in peace building through informal interactions and through creating a positive perception of the military in the local population. However, the article also brings to light some of the issues in soldiers identifying with the peacekeeper identity and the almost police-like identity of peacekeeping. And so... Perhaps this is something which should be extended in the scope of training and something which should be validated and encouraged in training. This article was made by a collaboration between nations and is an international political perspective on the role of the military in prevention of violent conflict. The 
article begins with foundation of peace and conflict studies and takes a holistic perspective on the issue, clearly trying to create a new idea to create change. And this is in light of the large amount of expenditure that countries have on military intervention and trying to find ways to reduce this and to also create lasting peace. And they suggest that prevention is a way of doing this and they discuss the role of the military in that prevention method and concept. And one of the key ideas is the comprehensive contact team, which is a theoretical team um, which is made up of lots of different actors in the post-conflict space, um, as well as the pre-conflict or within conflict space. And many of the operational outputs that the military would be expected to undertake in this comprehensive contact team um, would be similar to normal post-conflict operations and peacebuilding operations. However, there's an additional understanding dimension which focuses on human-centric skills and understanding the culture and understanding the history and causes of conflict. And this links a bit to the previous article, which focuses on the more informal interactions between soldiers and locals and how this can help to build peace and build trust. Um, however, I question whether this comprehensive contact team in a prevention scenario could be undertaken by an unarmed force, which is something which was also brought to light in the first couple of articles about the need and the, the need and the requirement for military intervention compared to unarmed force intervention. This is um, a very descriptive graphic from the Understand to Prevent article just discussed previously, and it shows how prevention has the potential to reduce the levels of violence and stabilise a community much faster than if intervention takes place after the peak of a conflict. The role of the military in facilitating post-conflict peace processes is perhaps a form of forced reconciliation sometimes if those peace processes are top-down peace agreements rather than bottom-up reconciliation processes. So the idea of prevention being more than um, a post-conflict reconciliation process, but almost a continuous reconciliation process and one which is much more bottom-up and grassroots focused. Some of my key reflections from the research which I've done into military involvement in peace operations have been the limited scope of the military within those wider peace operations and that being limited to stabilisation, ceasefires, the monitoring of those ceasefires and the protection of civilians in conflicts. And within the wider peace operation, while reconciliation may be a part of that operation, the military doesn't necessarily play a role in forcing that reconciliation, rather it facilitates it. Another important aspect was the human-centric skills which are required of some of the soldiers who are interacting with local people and how they are expected to be able to shift roles between being a soldier and being a diplomat often, and how this perception of the peacekeeping force from the local community shapes the success of those operations, as well as the quality of the troops shaping the success of those operations. Another important takeaway for me was the potential for pre prevention of violent conflicts and the role that the military could potentially play in that. Although, from the proposed theory, I wonder whether unarmed forces could perhaps play that role. 
Another key takeaway was the importance of interdisciplinary approaches, which I think has been demonstrated well in this presentation, which has utilised a whole range of different disciplines and dis dif different disciplinary studies. For me, future research that could be interesting is into how the perception of the military impacts its success. Um, so looking more into perhaps the perspectives of the local people and the community of those militaries and using that as a sufficient and intriguing investigation.